Today on Dr. Phil, her sister is raising her daughter. Did you choose drugs over your daughter? At this time, I'm clean and sober. Is she a fit mother? You gave this to your daughter. And I said, no hoodie. We don't want her in a hoodie, but this is okay. You got arrested. You're on probation. I am not. This says you are on probation. What will a drug test reveal? You are not what I would consider drug free. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. While researching our story today, we found this private Facebook message from Mom Dana. Guess this is it. I'm not your mom, I guess. I really loved you. Bye. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> then we found a private message from Grandma Virginia. She writes, good luck. Maybe I'll see you when you're 18. <laughs> So who are this mom and grandma writing to? Well, would you believe it's an innocent 13-year-old girl? Pack your bags. We're going on a guilt trip. It's all because Dana says her sister Jay is purposely keeping her away from her own daughter. Instead of dealing with this custody situation like adults, they, in my opinion, are putting a 13-year-old smack in the middle, and I don't like it. Take a look. I decided to have temporary guardianship of my daughter given to my sister, Jay. Jay won't give me my daughter back. I have asked, I have pleaded, I have begged. It feels like a part of me is missing. I do hate my sister, and I hate the kind of person that she's raising my daughter to be. I do have a problem with Jay's lifestyle. I don't agree with what goes on in their home. She drinks alcohol like a fish with a bad liver, and she goes out and parties, and my daughter's around them. Jay is very harsh, cruel, kind of black-hearted. All Jay does is work. She doesn't teach her anything except cook your own dinner and how to scrub a floor. She's Cinderella. Jay is trying to turn my daughter against me. She's calling me a junkie, whore, terrible mom. I want to have my daughter back. I cannot wrap my brain around why I can't have her back. I don't understand that. I'm done. I'm done with Jay. Done. There has been a competition between Jay and I our entire lives. I was always the smarter one, the prettier one. Jay has the ultimate thing to dangle over my head now. She has wanted her whole life to be me, and now she has the ultimate me. She has my baby, and she's not giving her back. Well, there has got to be a reason Jay has guardianship of Dana's daughter, right? Well, Jay says there is a very good reason she's caring for her niece. Take a look. Dana is a very bad heroin addict, and she also has mental issues. She doesn't take ownership for anything. My niece was born addicted to methadone. Dana started using heroin when she was about 15. Dana will be sober for a short amount of time. She will do really well, and then she relapses. When my niece is with my sister, I believe that it is a chaotic environment because my sister tends to surround herself with other addicts. My niece expressed to me one day that one of my sister's boyfriends put a knife to her throat. My niece does not feel safe when she is living with her mother. She's a master manipulator and is very good at covering up her drug usage and her alcohol usage. So it's extremely hard for anybody to determine whether or not she's sober at any point. I have a job. I have two jobs. Why can't she do that and be a good parent 
to her daughter. I want my sister to accept the fact that her daughter doesn't want to live with her. I hope that my sister will just sign custody over to me and let her daughter be happy and stop the fighting. So you want this child full-time, permanent? I honestly just want her to be safe and happy. Well, that's not what you said. You said I want her to just sign her over to me, to sign custody over to me. It would be a lot easier, yes, if she did. And you think that's the best thing for this child? Absolutely. Why? Because my sister can't take care of her. She's proven over and over again that she cannot take care of her. So you think she's at risk for relapsing? You Absolutely. think she's at risk for bad decisions? Absolutely. Are you? I think any addict is at risk for relapse. But at this point in time, I'm clean and sober, and I deserve to have a relationship with my daughter. But more so, my daughter deserves a relationship with her mother. If that's true, why is she 13 and has not been with you for over half of her life? There has, it has been a significant time that she has been out of my care. Did you choose drugs over your daughter? I, at some points I did. I chose drugs over a lot of things in my life in the I'm past. I'm asking about a lot of things. Because let me tell you, I wouldn't even be here talking to you two if it wasn't for this 13-year-old child. Right. I am outraged at what you are exposing this child to, you and you and your mother. You made a choice and you put drugs ahead of your daughter time and time again, true? True. So why would you do any different now? Because I'm at a different stage in my life and I've been clean. And Is she? Is she at a different stage in her life? <laughs> why do you not have confidence that she's going to do the right thing here? Because it's a cycle. It's a pattern. She's done this over and over and over again and it seems that whenever mm -hmm. she is sober, she plucks her daughter from her life whenever she's ready and mm -hmm. uproots whatever stability that her daughter has. And it's, it's not fair. It's not fair for this child. She says at one point in her life, she saw you with a needle in your arm. I don't think that that's true. My daughter um, lies a lot. So your daughter's a liar? She does lie. I have two rules with children. One is you don't ask them to deal with adult issues. How would you score yourself on that? I think I try and block her from as much as I possibly can. And you don't think you have burdened her with knowing more about adult issues here than she should? I ask her what she wants. And I have explained to her time and time again if she wants to go back and live with her mother, I will support her that she wouldn't be hurting my feelings at all. I want her to be happy. And she has flat out said that she does not want to live with her mom. She doesn't trust her. She says she shouldn't be with you for a number of reasons. I, I made a list. She says one thing, she's gained weight. She says you're unhealthy, you're out of shape, and now she's beginning to model after you. True? Um, no, <clears throat> not at all. Are you aware what puberty is? Girls tend to get a little heavier when they're going through puberty. Should she shows up, she's not even have clean clothes on. What? She's in filthy clothes when she comes from you. I'm just telling you, that's that, what that you was said. A flat out lie. Is that you what you said? It. There was dog hair. Her underwear were soiled. There was soiled. Yeah. Give me a break, Dana. He says you smoke <laughs> pot. You drink. No, I do you, not. you take you pills. Give me a drug test right uh, now. Okay. Glad you brought that up. I'll and give do her it. one while you're at it. I'll do that too. She says you allowed her to send bikini photos to allowed. a boy in class. No, as a matter of fact, I grounded her ass for that. She got in big trouble for that because it was completely inappropriate. And then last night, she gives her a mini skirt, tiny little thing, and she's telling me that I allowed You're her. You're saying that was offensive to you that, she, that this picture went out. She shouldn't be doing that. I agree with Did you. Did you That's buy her a mini skirt? Trouble. She took a bunch of clothes of mine from my suitcase. You know what she did? She showed it to me last night and said, can you believe mom gave this to me? I, I didn't want to give her any of my stuff, but I have guilt issues. A lot of guilt issues. You, you gave this to your daughter? And I said no about the hoodie, and I said no about the pants, but okay, I Okay, well, have... we damn sure don't want her in a hoodie, but this is okay? <laughs>
Let me explain something to you. When she begs me for stuff, when she begs me for stuff, my guilt, I just end up saying yes. What you're saying is, I'm here, I'm clean, I'm sober, I am ready to parent my daughter. I parent from guilt, I can't tell her no, I let her do things that are wholly inappropriate because I feel guilty, but I am who should be taking care of this child. And I'm working on that. She was always prettier, she was always smarter, she was always more popular, and now you've got power over her. Is this just sibling rivalry? And later... Enough is enough. Exactly. So stop. There's always been the sibling rivalry. You say they're spoiled, snotty little bitches. Who raised them? Wouldn't that be you? My daughter living in Tennessee, I dislike in every shape, way, or form. The schools in Tennessee rate some of the lowest in the entire country. I asked her what she's doing for fun, and she said building fires. It used to be, I'm in baseball, I'm in Girl Scouts. Now it's in building fires. They'd get in full gear and drag themselves on the back of a truck on a mattress. There's some sex offenders close by, and she walks to the bus stop by herself. The food that they eat is not good. Her clothes aren't washed properly. It's not clean. It's not to the standards that it should be having a young woman in that home. She says it was so bad that she was living in a house that was riddled with mold. Our house did have mold in it, but that was not our fault. I mean, old houses sometimes have mold, and we moved. She says you told her that her mother's an addict and she cannot be trusted. I have told my niece, I have told my niece that her mother is an addict. Um, she actually asked me. Did you tell her she was born addicted? I, I may have said that she was on methadone when she was born. Well, you just a few minutes ago were, were just self-righteously indignant at me suggesting that you were asking this child to deal with adult issues. She asks me questions. And I answer her. And I explain to her that this is an adult conversation. And I actually started off like that. Well, as long as you tell her it's an adult conversation. <laughs> I think that Come she on. has formed an opinion about her mother because of the things that she has seen. Did you tell her that her mother was a convicted felon? Did I tell her daughter that? No. I'm sure she did. How well, you told us she know? did. Do you, do you know that she did? How else I don't, would, how does else would she my know? daughter know? Does she know? She asked me questions about it. I, I never said that know? you were a convicted felon. Did you tell her that if she didn't live with you, she would be in foster care? No. You said she did. Are she you, did. Where are you getting this stuff? She's saying it's true. One of you's not telling the truth. When my daughter tells me these things, how else would she know that these things unless she was being told that? Or unless I, it was being said in her house and she's overhearing. I actually have told my niece that she will never be in foster care because somebody will always be there to take care of her. She has said that you told her straight up those things were true, that she was an addict, that she would be in foster care if she wasn't with you, that she was a convicted felon. No, I never and said that. And that your motive for wanting this child is money from the state. Yeah, uh, the whole 140 to 140 bucks that I get a month. Yeah. That's... That really helps. And actually, I've had to get a second job to help pay the rent because we had to move into a bigger house so your daughter could have her own room and her own space. Is this just sibling rivalry? I don't know what it is. It's hell. I she says that you're doing this because back. you've always been second best, that she was always prettier, she was always smarter, she was I always skinnier, that. she was always more popular. And now you've got power over her and you are grinding it no, in. No, not at all. I don't want power over her at all. Do you believe that? That's what you told us. I do believe that. And I also think that I w remember what it was like being 13. Boys, friends, you couldn't rip me out of where I was when I was 13 either. So why are you doing but that to her then? There is a child should be with their mother. If they're there fit. Is and I am fit. Well, is that true? I, all right, let's, let's take a break. Coming up, Jay and Dana's mom is here. You might be surprised where she thinks her granddaughter should live. We're going to find out what she says after the break.
I think my girls are snotty little bitches. My granddaughter's involved in all this. They do have to come together for my granddaughter. And later, you say that you've been clean since 1113, right? Correct. Is that true? Yes. Do you think you tested positive for anything of note? Jay is being disowned from our family. She has broken up this family. She has taken my daughter away from me. And that is not OK. Well, Dana and her sister Jay are here because they are at each other's throats over who should be raising Dana's 13-year-old daughter. Now, Dana gave temporary custody to her sister Jay, but Dana says that she wants her back now. Her mom, Virginia, says that even after using drugs, going to rehab and struggling with the law, that actually Dana deserves to have her daughter back. Take a look. I think Dana's a really good mom, but when the drug addiction comes into play, she can't be a good mom. That's just impossible. At this point in my granddaughter's life, she would be better off with Dana. I don't think living with Jay is a good situation. It's an unhealthy environment. I think my girls are snotty little bitches. There's so much drama between my daughters. They send nasty text messages to each other all the time. Jay will push a button. She has called Dana a bitch, a whore, a drug addict, somebody who doesn't deserve a daughter, continuously badgering her. I think my granddaughter's playing both sides. She wants to be with her mom, but feels obligated to stay with her auntie. I think she's confused. She has been manipulated into thinking one way, and I don't think she should be taken seriously. I do worry about my granddaughter. I worry about her stability, who to look up to and where to go. They do have to come together for my granddaughter. OK, um, so are you surprised at what your mother is saying? Not at all, because I have my niece's best interest in mind. And uh, I do fight tooth and nail for her. What do you have to say? I feel like both of them are spoiled brats. <laughs> and spoiled. they dragged this child in the middle of a mess. I try to bring them up in a very special, kind environment to get along. But there's always been the sibling rivalry. Well, you say they're spoiled, snotty little bitches. Who raised them? I know. Would you think that? Wouldn't that be you? Yes, and I, I will take that responsibility. Here is a Facebook message from Virginia to her granddaughter. Now, this was August 28th of this year, 7.37 p.m., Virginia. I am not mad that you want to stay in Tennessee. I'm not being mean, but I'm actually glad. It gives me a chance to travel with my friends. There won't be any travel for us to Tennessee. I'm done with this whole mess, which means I won't be participating with you coming here for any vacations. Too much money. I don't know about mom. Good luck with all that you do. Maybe I'll see you when you're 18. Seriously? You I wrote know. that Wasn't to that your terrible? granddaughter? I, I totally feel <clears throat> terrible.
people about that. Then you said, a few days later, you apparently recovered from fearing terrible because you said, your poor mother is devastated you stopped communicating with her or just enough for you to tell her you got to go. My mother did far worse things than your mom ever did, and I won't stop communicating with her for a million bucks. We think that you just wanted to come out here for us to buy you clothes and show you a good time. Well, that will never happen again, and not communicating with your mom is about the coldest thing I've ever heard of in a long time. Terrible. It's terrible. What the hell are you thinking? I don't and know. I, I'm the one who... Were you, were I'm you sober I'm when you pieces. wrote that? I know, you would were, No, seriously. No, I, I'm totally sober. I haven't, I don't drink or take drugs or anything. I got mixed up in the mess. Did as you a, know she was writing that to your daughter? No. And as a mother, my heart is completely broken without, without her. I appreciate everything that my sister has done for me. No, you don't. But I do. No, you don't. I, from the you bottom couldn't. of my heart, I do. You just said you hated me. You've told me but that enough, you've never had a sister. But enough is enough. Exactly. So stop. The time, stop bullying the me, both time of is you. This up. is ridiculous. My daughter and I need to be together again. You begged me to take your daughter for one month so you could go to rehab, and it turned into five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old. That's when she went back. You've been to rehab 10 or 12 times, right? Correct. You've been to rehab 10 or 12 times. She didn't have her that long. You have had false starts with your daughter taking her back on five occasions that I know of. Uh, there may be others, but on five occasions, you've said, okay, I'm ready, let's bring her back, right? Correct, but I did and then have fell her apart. for third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and half of sixth grade. So there was continuous time that I did have her clean and sober. You were not. You were not at Until all. Until the very end. No. And the, was yeah. it during that time that this incident with the knife took place? I don't know what incident that is. Her daughter told me that... What'd she say? Her boyfriend was extremely drunk and they got the Dana was fighting with him and her daughter stepped in and he put a knife to her daughter's throat that is absolutely untrue 100 so percent your daughter's lying about that yes too. that never happened and you think she's been brainwashed by your sister i do and you think that Tennessee is a bad deal? I do. Was it because a bunch of hicks and hillbillies? Is that it? <laughs> that, I mean, is that what you're saying? Because that's, that's how not... you describe it. You say the schools are bad. They, yes. they go out and build fires and go in the woods. And oh, that's yeah. what she told us. Maybe we have a bonfire no in the back. No extracurriculars. <laughs> the schools are. She's... Well, being out in nature and building a bonfire sounds pretty extracurricular to me. Of course, now I'm a hillbilly, so. <laughs> You're not on probation. I am not. You are telling me the truth. I am, sir. Eyeball, eyeball. You are I telling am. me the truth. That's interesting because I have here this piece of paper. We've had a look at her grades and how she's doing. Right. She's going to um, get A's. And he here's, th these are her achievements and awards. She has awards for high academic achievement, receiving honors in language arts in the seventh grade, high achievement, academic achievement, receiving honors in science in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. high academic achievement, receiving honors in social studies in the seventh grade, received straight A's last year in the seventh grade, outstanding achievement for making the honor roll. We need to stop this. I mean... She uh, did that in Massachusetts, which was some of the highest school systems in the country. You're concerned about the quality of her education, but yet for seven and a half years, you were doing heroin and didn't know whether she was coming or going. That's untrue. I was only maintaining. I was not, I was not, I was only maintaining. I was not falling over. Um, actually, you were. Do you remember exposing yourself falling over, not wearing underwear in front of your daughter and her friend from school? And then your daughter told me that she never wanted to go back to school again because now the whole school knows that 
That was one. You don't wear underwear. I but, but you just said no. That wasn't true. I was just maintaining. I wasn't high on heroin. Her daughter, I was just maintaining on heroin, was, like I was a good heroin addict. No, that was drinking. <laughs> what? I, I, that was no heroin whatsoever. That was alcohol. And I'm not denying the the stuff that I've done in my past. But from you got arrested now, in June, this year. And that had nothing to do with drugs, at all. Okay, you got arrested in June. What did you get arrested for? <laughs> it was for, I took care of an old woman, and it was for... You can um, say it, check fraud. You stole her checks. But I didn't you, do it. Well, actually, <laughs> while, while Dana says she has been clean and sober uh, for 21 months, she hasn't been able to stay out of trouble. Let's hear what she has to say about this. I was arrested. I wouldn't have got arrested if it wasn't for my sister. I began working for an elderly woman. She would give me her ATM card. I had her PIN number and everything. There was two checks that I was accused of forging. Jay called the detective and said so many lies about me. And so they had enough probable cause to arrest me. I am not on probation now. No court fines, no nothing. Well, you said you didn't do that, but you've pled guilty. To get it over with. And that was on the advice of my attorney. You might want to get a different attorney. Right? This attorney told you to plead guilty to felony fraud? Yeah. Yes. And, and to get it over with. So when in California, if you just plead guilty, they say, okay, we're done. Because you said, I'm not on probation, I'm done, I'm, I'm free. I'm not on probation, I don't know any court fines in, in a year. How can you it's not be on misdemeanor. probation? You've pled guilty. They just said, okay, as long as you admit it, we're square? I'm not. <laughs> You're not on probation? I am not. You are telling me the truth? I am, sir. I, eyeball, eyeball. You are I telling am. me the truth? I do not have to report into anybody. You know, that's interesting, because I have here... Oh, yeah. This piece of paper... This is from the Superior Court of California, mm -hmm. uh, County of San Diego. July 25th, 2014. Dana, probation is granted to expire July 24th, 2017. But does it, I don't have to appear in, I don't have any probation officer or anything. You're on probation. <laughs> I don't know what the conditions of your probation are because it doesn't matter. You are on probation. You said plead guilty to get it over with. This isn't over with until July 24th of 2017. You are on criminal felony probation until July 24th, 2017. This is the document. Does it say I have to report into any probation? What it says is that you are on probation. Well, you know what else they, these two have just said? They have said they are willing to take drug tests. Mm -hmm. I have a nurse. I have a nurse standing by backstage who is prepared to administer two drug tests. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will have the results because they will be instantaneous. Um, and up next, Dana's daughter is here, and I'd like her thoughts on being stuck in the middle of this adult drama. We'll be right back. I feel bad for my mom because I know she wants me back. And I feel bad for my aunt because I know that she's fighting for me because she knows it's not good for me to move back with my mom. I'm heading in to talk to this daughter right now and find out how she feels about everything. Hey, girl. Hello. Dr. Phil, how are you? I'm good. So glad to meet you. <laughs> Me too. You're 13, right? Mm hmm And you're in the seventh grade or you started the eighth? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. How are you liking school? I love school. It's really nice. Yeah. Now, you live in Tennessee. Mm hmm Yeah. How yes. do you like it there? Um, Tennessee's really nice. I like it. Listen, um, what do you know about why we're here today? About what we're talking about out there among the adults? Um, well, <clears throat> I know that there's, like, lots of fighting going on. So I'm pretty sure that 
they were trying to work everything out and stop the fighting and mm -hmm. um how do you know there's fighting going on because i'm caught in the middle of all of it yeah how so um well my mom wants me back but my aunt doesn't think that she's ready so my aunt is doing what's best for me and um trying to to have me in the best place that she thinks is right and that mm -hmm. would be with her mm -hmm. how do you feel about your relationship with your mom and you don't live with her um our relationship is okay it's not that great yeah what why is it not that great um well because she's like said mean things and said that she didn't she wanted to delete me from her life but then wanted me back <clears throat> so it's it's a work in progress mm -hmm. how do you feel when you read stuff like that um well i feel upset because it's my mom and that's sad i, I think some mistakes have really been made here uh, i'm sorry to say i i think You've been, as you said, drug into the middle of some things that you didn't really need to be in the middle of. And I, I hate that for you, and I'm going to try to get everybody to stop that. And here's the good news. Um, you have a lot of people that love you a lot. That's okay? good. Okay? I mean, they really do love you and want the best for you. But the truth is that adults... You know, they're people too, and you're heading in that direction, and you'll see sometimes uh, when you have children, they don't give you a manual with them that says, you know, you get that on your iPhone, but they don't give you a manual for kids, and they sometimes don't know what's right and what's wrong. But I'm going to try to straighten some of that out today so you don't feel like a rope in a tug-of-war. Okay. What do you want to do? Um... Well, I want to stay in Tennessee with my aunt. Mm -hmm. But yet you miss your mother. Um, yeah, but I don't think she's ready to have me. Yeah, why do you say that? Why do you say she's not ready? Um, well, she doesn't take, like, responsibility for, for things that she's done, and she thinks, like, I'm her best friend and doesn't really treat me like a kid. Is makes, that how you feel, or is that what you've heard people say? Um, that's how I feel, but I've also heard, like, m um, my aunt and uncle say that, but um, they've discussed with me, um, like, why they think that, and, mm -hmm. and so I see why they think that. Do you hope long-term that you have a relationship with your mom? Yeah. Do you hope someday that you would live with her? Um... If she proves to me that she can, she can have me, then I'll think about living with her again. Mm -hmm. If you could send me out there with one message for these people, what would it be? To get along. I just want everything to stop. Yeah, you just want everything to stop. Mm -hmm. Well, how nice would it be if you didn't have to worry about all that and you could just be 13? <laughs> That'd be nice. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Mm hmm All right. All right it's you. good to meet you, girl. You too. I'm going to go talk to the adults and keep okay. you out. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Um, did you listen to my conversation with her? I did. Uh, what did you think about it? Some of it was sad. What did you think about it? I think that she's a brave little girl. Mm -hmm. I think um, what stuck out to me <clears throat> is she says all of you adults are keeping her in this emotional turmoil. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. You're guilty of it. Yes. Sir. You're guilty of it. Absolutely. You're guilty of it. Absolutely. And you people need to grow up. Yes. You need to grow up and get her out of the middle. Yes. Now, <clears throat> um, you say that 
you've been clean since 1113, right? Correct. Is that true? Yes. And you say you've been clean for a long time. Yeah. I'm... We have a nurse here. Mm -hmm. She took a urine sample from you. It's called First Check. It's what's used in drug rehab programs. You've probably taken that very test before. Um, do you think you tested positive for anything of note? Uh, just what my prescriptions are for. Well, you have a prescription um, for Two. methadone? Yes. And Vicodin? Um, the oxycodone, just one prescription. Uh -huh. And why are you taking oxy? Uh, I just had surgery on my foot. Are you smoking marijuana? No. Are you doing cocaine? No. This says you are. I'd like to send that to a lab. I think maybe we should do a blood test. That's absolutely fine. And take it further because this says you tested positive for marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine. Uh, it also says that you were on ecstasy. <laughs> no. It was probably no. false positives for every single no, one. No, it, it you did not test positive for opiates, heroin. Well, then it's complete uh, opposite. Cause you, it, you didn't uh, test positive for barbiturates, but you did test positive for the oxycodone, which yeah. is a specific. Um, and, and you are taking it, so it, it picked that up. It says you're on barbiturates, which are your muscle relaxer. Yeah. I just have a question. Did mine show up for marijuana? No. Thank you. <laughs> I told you. Did so not, please don't slander me and say that I'm using drugs like that. I, I, don't, I don't consider you to be drug free. Uh, I don't consider you to be drug free. I mean, you, this is not healthy. This is not good for you. Uh, I'm not saying you're abusing this. I'm just saying it's not, not good at all. for you. But I'm telling you, it's not good for you. Based on what I heard when I sat down with your daughter, do you get that she thinks you're not ready? I get that she's saying this because she's a smart, manipulative 13-year-old little girl who wants to stay where she's at. Did you hear her say things that make you believe that you've crossed the boundaries and have said things that have dragged her into mm -hmm. adult issues? Probably mm -hmm. so. She, no, I'm saying based on what she said. Yeah. I said, because she said, well, you know, this and that. I said, is that what you think or is that what you've been told? Well, I do think that, but that's what I've been told by my aunt and by Jack. This is Jack. Jack, thank you for being here. You're her fiance, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, you say that she wants to live with you and Jay. She does. We want Dana to succeed. We want her to successfully get her daughter back but by doing the right things. Mm -hmm. To me, this is her, her tactic here is she doesn't have a job, she doesn't have a stable home, she doesn't have the things that she needs to get her daughter back, so instead she chooses to bully her sister, bully me, bully her daughter, so that eventually we'll throw our hands up and say, you know what, just take her back. Yep. That way you'll get your way. Mm -hmm. and, and it's That's just not true. right. I, I'm gonna tell you who I think should raise this bright and beautiful 13-year-old. You wanna know? I'm gonna tell you what I think when we come back. <laughs> bickering and criticizing each other and using her as the battlefield over which you deal with the issues that you have had your entire life. You have issues with how your daughters have turned out. Your daughters have issues with how you brought them up. You have issues yeah. with your sister. You have issues with your sister. All of that goes on. Don't use this child as the battleground to vent those things. You just don't do that. You just don't do that. There's something called fiduciary. A fiduciary is when you put someone else's interest ahead of your own. Right. And you need to be a fiduciary for this child. You need to say, I, it doesn't matter what I think or feel, 
I need to put this child's interest ahead of everything else. So let me get to it straight up. This child needs to remain with you in your home, in your care, and under your tutelage. It isn't even a close call. Thank you. So that's what I think needs to happen with the child. The number one goal that I would have is for this child to reunify with you, her mother. And raising children is about sacrifice. And right now, the place where your daughter is thriving is in Tennessee. You need to go to Tennessee. You need to be where your daughter is thriving. You need to be where your daughter is thriving. You need to be there when she's getting ready for a dance. You need to be there when she's got a game. You need to be there when it's time to go to the mall on a day-to-day -day basis and continue this sobriety that you say you have. Let that string out and let her get a new history of realizing, you know what? Mom is the same every day. She doesn't go up, she doesn't go down, she doesn't get high one day and not the next, she doesn't relapse, she doesn't do this, she's there every day. I can emotionally trust her. Then you need to start rebuilding your relationship with her and that's going to take some professional help and guidance which I will personally provide to you and your daughter. So the two of you can rebuild this and she can get out the things that she needs to get out and you have the support of a professional saying, here's how we get on the road to getting you back. That will be my gift to you and to your daughter to get that done. Thank you. That's the gift for her. I want to thank all of my guests today. For more information on parenting and custody, log on to drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.